So far, we've solved this pair of differential equations under a limited set of circumstances, that is, the masses were equal and the outer two springs, k0 and k2, are equal, and in this very symmetric situation, we guessed it at a pair of normal modes that were symmetric and antisymmetric, and we could solve our equations. But this may not always be the case. We may have unequal masses, unequal spring constants, and instead of just two masses, we may have a system of n masses all coupled together. In that case, we would anticipate n equations with n normal modes and n different normal mode frequencies. So we need some sort of method to find those normal mode frequencies for those n equations. We'll investigate this general method using just this pair of equations, and then later see how it would apply to n equations. So to begin, we take x1 to be, have some amplitude multiplied by an oscillating exponential with frequency omega, and x2 is the same except with a different amplitude. Now the frequencies here are the same, and what we anticipate is that for two equations, we find two different frequencies, one for each normal mode. And for n equations, we would find n different frequencies for n different normal modes. So let's see how this goes. First, we write this pair of equations as a matrix and a vector. So we have some matrix here with a coefficients of k and m, multiplying by the vector of x's, and that's equal to the second derivative of each of these x's here. To find the second derivatives, we use these substitutions up here, noting that for each time derivative, we get a factor of i omega popping out the front, and that gives us a negative omega squared multiplied by the vector of x's. Rewriting this factor of negative omega squared out the front as an identity matrix multiplied by negative omega squared, we get on the right hand side a matrix times a vector. So now we can take this matrix times a vector over to the left hand side of the equation to leave zero on the right hand side, and here, adding these two matrices together, we find a single matrix multiplied by the vector of x's equal to zero. A matrix m multiplied by the vector x is equal to zero. m dot x is equal to zero. This is the equation we're trying to solve, in this case for a two by two matrix and a two uh, by one vector. Now, the possible solutions here are either that x is equal to zero, so these functions here are always zero, in which case this equation is always satisfied, or the determinant of m, the determinant of this matrix, is equal to zero, in which case the two rows of the matrix are not linearly independent, and that also allows us to solve this equation for all time. So this is a pretty boring case here. We'll think about the determinant of m being equal to zero and see what that gives us. So the determinant of m equal to zero, well the determinant is the product of these diagonal elements minus the product of the anti-diagonal elements, so that means we have this equation here. Now this is an equation, a quadratic equation, for omega squared, which we could solve, and it would be pretty ugly if we did. Well, let's just have a look at the solution for the symmetric case we looked at previously, where the masses were equal and k2 and k0 were equal, and see whether this gives us the same normal mode frequencies as we found in the highly symmetric case. So making those substitutions, we find this simpler looking quadratic equation. Solving it for omega squared, we find omega squared is k0 on m, or k0 plus 2k1 on m. And indeed, here we find the symmetric and anti-symmetric normal mode frequencies. Except, um, in this case, we could actually have solved a more complicated situation with arbitrary masses and spring constants. Let's now see how this method works for n couple oscillators. If we have n oscillators, then each of those oscillators will have a coordinate x, and our vector x will be n elements long. We'll have x1 through to xn. So that's our vector x, and the matrix A will be some matrix full of coefficients, and for springs and masses, those coefficients will be made up of spring constants and masses. And A times x will be equal to the second derivative of the vector x. Now this is the kind of equations that will come out if you use Newton's laws to treat n coupled masses, as we've done before. But more generally, this kind of system of equations can come out of any other kind of coupled oscillators. And so any system of equations that looks like this can be solved using the method we're about to see. So first of all, we'll assume that each x can be written in this form, some amplitude multiplied by an oscillating exponential with frequency omega. And the goal here is to find n values for omega, one omega for each normal mode. And each normal mode will have its own unique 
normal mode frequency. So we can use this substitution here to eliminate the second derivative from our equation because if we take a derivative of x of k we get an i omega coming down out of the exponential we do that twice we get a negative omega squared so the second derivative of the vector x will be negative omega squared times the vector x. Substituting that in to our equation up here then we find a matrix equation that looks like this a our matrix coefficients plus i omega squared where i is the identity matrix multiplied by the vector x must be equal to zero and to solve this matrix equation here either the vector x is equal to zero or the determinant of this matrix here is equal to zero and this is the interesting solution so this is an eigenvalue equation in fact the eigenvalues of the system are omega squared in this case and so the square root of the eigenvalues gives us the normal mode frequencies the eigenvectors of the system tell us what the normal modes look like and we'll see what the eigenvectors mean on the following page. Now a quick side note to people who've seen eigenvalues and eigenvectors before, this eigenvalue equation is a little strange because the eigenvalues here are going to be given by omega squared. Normally if you've seen eigenvalues and eigenvectors before then you might call the eigenvalues lambda and this eigenvalue equation here would be a minus i times lambda in that case our normal mode frequencies would be given by the square root of minus lambda. It's just because we've made some assumptions here about how the physics works that we come up with an eigenvalue equation that conveniently gives us square root of normal mode frequencies straight off. Let's now discover what I meant by eigenvector. So the eigenvalues remember were the values of omega squared that solve this matrix equation and this is the case here with the, the symmetry and we found values of omega squared of k0 on m or k0 plus 2 k1 on m and these values of omega squared are the normal mode frequencies which we previously identified as omega s and omega a so these are the eigenvalues the eigenvalues give us the normal mode frequencies or the square of the normal mode frequencies the eigenvector we can find now so we'll do it for the example of the symmetric mode omega s. So we take this solution, so we have two solutions here for omega, we'll take the solution omega s. So here's our eigenvalue equation and we'll substitute in the value for omega s here. So we get this equation, there's a lot of cancellation that goes on here and we end up with this matrix equation here. Now as anticipated the rows of this matrix are no longer linearly independent. Taking just one of these rows and multiplying it out we find that it means that x1 and x2 must be equal. So if x1 and x2 are equal we can write the vector x1 x2 in this form here. So x1 x2 is some vector 1 1 with some mode amplitude as e to the i omega s plus phi s. So this is the amplitude and frequency of the symmetric mode because we've used omega s and the mode pattern here is given by 1 1. This is to say that the amplitude, relative amplitude and relative phase of the motion of x1 and x2 are embedded in this vector and in this case the motion is in phase with equal amplitude. And this thing, this 1 1, that is the eigenvector for the eigenvalue omega s squared. Now if we were to do the same calculation again but instead of substituting in the value here for the symmetric frequency we made omega squared equal to the anti-symmetric frequency here, then we would calculate a different eigenvector for the anti-symmetric mode and we get this eigenvector here and this shows us that the amplitudes of x1 and x2 are equal but now out of phase because of the minus sign here.